he just screamed, like, go back to your country. Was this right after 9-11? It was about a year after, yeah. Tell me more about that week before coming to Afghanistan. A lot of nerves before coming here. Were you scared? I felt in my heart that I needed to be here. What would you say to these people? People only hear the bad things when there's still so much good. I'm going to be spending a week in Afghanistan, exploring the culture, meeting people, and hopefully gaining a new perspective. Good morning and welcome back to another day in Afghanistan. This is our last day in Afghanistan, our last episode. So I said something very, very special for you. We're gonna meet an Afghan-American girl who traveled to Afghanistan this week. It was her first time. She's coming now. I'm curious about her story. I always wanted to come see my country. Since I was a little girl, I remember asking my mom, can we go to Afghanistan? When do I get to go to Afghanistan? And she'd always tell me, you know, maybe someday when it's better over there. My family has a lot of history here. My grandfather on my mom's side was the general of Afghanistan in the 70s. He actually ended up being a prisoner of war from 1973 to 1978 during the Russian coup d'etat. They tortured him, they tried to get information out of him. Luckily he had someone on the inside kind of helping him. They would tell him, you know, they were torturing his sons, my uncles. They would do whatever they could to get information out of him. And that guy that was on the inside would send him messages from my family, letting him know, you know, the family is safe. Don't worry, don't break, you're okay, you've got this. And luckily he made it out. His best friend though, uh, my mom's uncle, he did not make it out. He was the prime minister of Afghanistan during that time. He was also imprisoned and he ended up being assassinated, unfortunately. My great-great-grandfather was actually king of Afghanistan for nine days. They ended up having another coup though and they killed him by shooting him out of a cannon. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. You grew up in the US with Afghan heritage. How was life when you were a kid, a teenager? How was everything there? When I was younger, I was almost ashamed to be Afghan. You know, I wanted so much to fit in and I knew being Afghan made me different. During my prime years, ages five to 10, I was growing up in Virginia which is a predominantly white area, you know, and I already felt so different. I was a little brown girl, I had a mustache, a unibrow, you know, I looked so different and it made me stand out and I didn't want to. I wanted as much as I could to blend in. My family, my parents wanted me to assimilate. You know, they didn't really teach me Farsi growing up. They always wanted me to learn English. They wanted that to be my first language. Whenever I'd go to the store with my parents, they, if they spoke Farsi, I'd tell them to speak English. I didn't want to, I didn't want people looking at us, you know, thinking we were different. And I wanted very much to, for us to blend in and not to stand out in American culture. When I was about seven years old, that was the first time I really witnessed and experienced racism. We had an apartment and this guy was like trying to climb up the balcony of our apartment to get to his apartment above ours. I guess he got locked out or something. And my parents went outside and they started yelling at him like, what are you doing? You're damaging our property, like get off. He just screamed like, go back to your country. And that was the first time I had heard that. And I just didn't understand what he meant because you know, I was born and raised in America and my parents had been living there for 15, 20 years at that point. That was your country? Yeah, it was our country. I just didn't understand like what he meant and why he would say something like that. And then as I got older, I started understanding like, oh, you know, that was racism. He didn't want us there. He thought we were different. He wanted us to go back to where we were from. But, you know, we couldn't. That wasn't an option. My parents left to get a better future for themselves, for a better future for me. Was this right after 9-11? It was about a year after, yeah. I was six years old when 9-11 happened. I think after that, that's when I started really understanding that I am different and some people won't like that. It's just crazy to think mm -hmm. <laughs> that still today people can behave like that. Yeah. Tell me more about that week or that month before coming to Afghanistan. I feel like it was a lot of nerves mixed with excitement. I was very nervous because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And my family would tell me so much, like, they really didn't want me to come here. They were very nervous for me. They did everything they could to convince me not to come. They even offered to pay me back what I had spent in order for me to not come. I felt in my heart that I needed to be here. I, I can't explain it. I just... I have always wanted to see my country and getting the opportunity to finally see it, I couldn't pass it up. It felt like a once in a lifetime opportunity. It felt like it was meant to be. As nervous as I was, there was so much excitement there and so much like longing to finally be here and finally see it for myself. Were you scared? A little bit, yeah. 
you know, you never know what to expect in a country like this. Afghanistan has always faced a lot of turmoil. You know, its people have always had difficult lives. I knew that it would be difficult, but it was actually a lot safer than I expected. I never felt uncomfortable. I never felt unsafe or, you know, like nervous. It almost felt like being at home in a sense. Was there anything that you saw or something that you experienced? It will stay with you for a very long time? Seeing the children, seeing the future of Afghanistan and you know, their lives are very difficult yet they're still so happy. At one point we saw a little girl singing and I literally started crying. I just, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I was talking to our guide and he was just, you know, telling us about her and telling us about, you know, the lives of the children in Afghanistan and it just moved me to tears. I I want so much for them to have a bright future and for them to, you know, succeed and, you know, make Afghanistan what I know it could be. I believe that they can do it. I think the children here have, you know, a very bright future ahead of them and I believe that they can really change Afghanistan for the better. Maula, Maula, Maula. I really felt very emotional in that moment because yeah. that girl was so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what she said. It really felt like this is the future. Yeah. Really, this is a new generation. <laughs> what did you learn this week mm -hmm. in terms of cultural things or personal experience, your personal journey. Yeah. We went to some very historical sites. It was amazing getting to see those places and you know some of that history was pretty dark. Afghanistan has always had a very difficult past. I feel like other countries and other nations, they just don't want to see Afghanistan succeed. I feel like a powerful Afghanistan would really, you know, scare a lot of other people. I feel like I've learned, you know, at least for myself, like how proud I am to be Afghan. I already had some pride in being Afghan, you know, before coming here, but I want to like embrace it fully. I want to learn more about my history from my family and learn more about my culture, learn more Farsi because my Farsi is not that great. You told me before that growing up, uh, your parents were trying to talk to you in mm -hmm. Farsi, but obviously you were learning English. Mm -hmm. Today, when you have a conversation with your parents, how does it work? What language do you use? I use a little bit of both. Primarily English, just because that's what I'm, you know, better with. But, you know, I'll throw some Farsi words in there here and there if I know the word. Um, like if my mom asks me, like, oh, when are you going to the store? I'll, like, respond in Farsi. Or what do you want for food? You know, I'll respond in Farsi. But primarily English. And at some point, I guess you want to become super fluent. Yeah, I would love to become fluent. My grandma only speaks Farsi. She's the only grandparent I have left. And she's very old, so I know she doesn't have much time left. Getting to actually have a conversation with her without someone else there translating everything. You know, if I can have that conversation with her while she's still around, that would you know, being everything to me. You say you want to learn more Farsi and, and stuff, but going back to the mm -hmm. US, how do you plan to stay connected to Afghanistan? I think just doing my own research, talking to my family more, listening to their stories. Growing up, my family didn't really tell me many stories up until, I guess, more recent years. So I guess encouraging them to tell me more about our history and our culture and sharing that information with me and, you know, me actually asking about it rather than just waiting for them to tell me. I want to learn as much as I can about being Afghan. There might be other people in your position, other Afghan Americans, thinking, shall I go back? This is my identity, but it might be very dangerous, I'm not sure. What would you say to these people? I'd say do it. I know I had a lot of a lot of nerves before coming here, just because of the situation, you know, wasn't sure if I would feel unsafe, but at no point did I feel unsafe. I would encourage Afghans to come see our country and, you know, see the very historical, beautiful landscapes and historical sites, you know, before they're gone, because you never know what could happen. I definitely want to come back at some point if I can. There's so much of Afghanistan that I didn't get to see, and I would love to see all of her. Anything else you want to add for people watching? Don't always listen to the news about, you know, what they say about Afghanistan. Afghanistan has so much to offer and so much beauty and history and culture. I feel like the news only ever covers, you know, the negative, the bad things, and what's going wrong. Whereas there's so much going right, and there's so much beauty, history. Afghanistan has so much to offer, more than just what's in the news. And I feel like so many people don't know that. People only hear the bad things when there's still so much good. Honestly, I agree. And this week for me has been absolutely incredible. Two days ago, I sent a picture to my family and friends, and they asked me, Oh, are you still in Afghanistan? This doesn't look like Afghanistan. But what do you mean? 
mean in their mind Kabul the airport everything yeah. that we know that happened no they couldn't believe we were yeah. in Afghanistan and I think this is what people really need to understand and yes there's that situation that we all know in Afghanistan but there's also the fact that Afghanistan is a big country so a lot to experience a lot yeah. to see Afghanistan is much more than the capital and that episode that we know right mm-hmm. definitely thank you so much yes. yes for your time thank you That was an intense interview, but I'm glad that she wanted to talk and share who she is, her experience as an Afghan-American visiting for the first time Afghanistan, what she said on traditional media. I also want to stress this point. Sometimes when we see how some of the traditional media portrait these countries or some of these countries, yes, of course, there's some true facts, but sometimes I don't think everything is what they tell us, unfortunately. Getting the information firsthand, coming to the country, talking to these kind of people understanding how daily life is in these countries is probably the best way. These countries, they have an intense reputation. A lot of people don't want to come just because what they see on TV. And I feel like it's important always to do your independent research. If you want to visit, just make sure that you do it in a safe way. But use what you see on TV as a one more source of information. It doesn't need to be the only source of information. I think that's the important thing when thinking about unpopular countries. So do your independent research and then you make a decision by yourself in terms of what you want to do. In my case, I always try to do that because I believe daily life in the country is completely different to political issues or stuff like that. There's normal people like everywhere, people that didn't want to be happy, want to have family, want to smile, want to have a decent salary, want to feel protected, want to feel part of a group, part of a society, part of a community. We all want these kind of things to a certain degree. So I'm really happy that I had a chance to visit Afghanistan and made a series, all these videos that you watched over the last few weeks. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. This means the world to me. And if you found any kind of value, please feel free to share this with somebody. See you in the next series.